This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to build and run your own website. More on that later. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Let's cut to the chase. I made this video maybe around about three years ago, I think. And in that, I of course discussed the differences between these two plants. However, I think these plants have had a, a monumental journey since I don't know, 2018 to now in 2023. A lot's gone on, a lot has gone on. So today my aim is to refresh you on the differences between these two plants so that if you may be looking to buy one, you know which one to pop on your wish list. Heck, you might want both. And I also want to give my thoughts and opinions on both of these plants in 2023 because a lot's happened and I guess my opinions changed a little bit in some ways. Right, so the Monstera albo, previously known as Albo Borzigiana, it's basically just Monstera albo. It's the same thing. If you see them listed, it's the same plant. That plant has always been super popular. I would argue it's the most popular plant out of the two. I think that's fair to say. That plant's had a bit of a journey, a bit of a journey. We've had our fair share of scandals with that plant, to be honest. We've had anything from people selling plants that are painted to look white. We've had people selling sticks that do not grow. We've also had people selling plants that will almost certainly die and they've charged an increased rate for them. We've had a whole bunch of stuff happen and if you're interested I've actually made a full video on that. It's called the Dark Side of Variegated Monstera and I will link it for you in the description. Now then, the Monstera Thai Constellation has had a little bit of a different journey. It has gone up and down in price like no tomorrow. There was a huge worldwide shortage of them at some point despite the fact that they are produced in a lab. That's a little bit odd. But the main thing we had I think was the cost of farms thing. Do you remember the cost of farms thing basically if you don't know cost of farms came out with a really good idea to buy up all of the Thai from the people that create the Thai endlessly, endless supply at their end. But they were going to buy up as much of it as they could. They were going to manually propagate it and essentially create a massive reduction in the price of Thai by flooding the market with it. Spoiler alert, that didn't work. This, it's pretty obvious why that didn't work. Essentially, Costa Farms released a statement, I think it was last year now, basically saying, hi, we tried to do this, but actually we kind of can't, it's a bit difficult, so we're not gonna do that anymore, bye. And this was a bit of a shame because loads and loads of people believed that they were actually going to flood the market with Thai and they would get them from a really, really reduced price. Now, not that anyone asked for my opinion, but I'm going to give it anyway. I'm pretty sure that what might have happened was, one, we had the pandemic, which meant that demand was really high and prices were up, so you could charge anything for what you're selling, essentially. Everyone was victim for it. I think Costa Farms had arranged to buy a much higher amount from basically Thailand, where this plant is produced, clue is in the name, and they maybe didn't get as much as they'd hoped for. They thought they would then genuinely try and propagate it, but they probably discovered that the new batch of Thai, I call it Thai 2.0, we'll get into it later, is nowhere near as strong as Thai 1.0, which again, I'll get into it later. And of course they did have plant deaths and everything else, but I'm not sure why they thought, honestly, that they could somehow beat the creators of the plant that had literally hundreds of thousands of plants, buy them from them, grow them much slower, propagate them, and somehow win. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So that was that. Now we have Thai more or less back to what it was. I'm pretty sure that both plants have actually gone on a really big price arc. So we had huge prices for both plants in the pandemic, but now I almost want to tell you that they've come down to like pre-pandemic prices. Not in all cases, but in a lot of cases. For us over here in the UK, Monstera Albo is like, even like way cheaper than what it was before. You can get some really, really nice cuttings amongst other things, which we'll get into as well. But yeah, both of these plants have had a big journey. To be honest, it hasn't affected how popular they are in the market. They've still always been really, really popular despite any of this. So it's kind of cool to see that they both had their fair share of scandals, shall we say. So the good news is that the prices have come back down. It means if you're in the market to buy one, then you've come to the right place because I'm going to help you try and pick one. So, first things first, there are a lot more different types of variegated Monstera than just Monstera Albo and Monstera Thai, right? There's loads. You can get yellow, you can get green, you can get mint, you can get all kinds of things. And if you are interested in that, I'm not going to cover it today. I'm going to stick to these two plants. But I do have another video. I think it's just variegated Monstera types or Monstera Deliciosa types. I will link that down in the description because it goes through the different things that you can get. So if you're not necessarily sold on these two and you think, hmm, what else is there before I spend my cash? Feel free to watch that. You might get some good 
ideas, I guess, for your wish list. But today we're going to focus on these two. So I'm assuming you've watched this video because you have just found Monstera Deliciosa and it's got white variegation on it. And you think, right, that one looks different from that one. Are they the same? I think, I don't know, maybe you do know. And you think, what is the difference? Which one should I get? This video is for you. The best way to tell the difference with what you're looking at, whether it's an Albo or a Thai constellation, in my opinion, is to look for an aerosol spray of variegation. So loads of tiny little flecks in the leaf. If it has loads of tiny little flecks in the leaf, it is highly likely to be a Monstera Thai constellation that you are looking at. If it doesn't, and it just maybe has some, some sectoral chunks, so there's a lot more white on it, then it's probably a Monstera Albo. If there's solid green for miles on the leaf, it's probably a Monstera Albo. So there's two things I want you to know before we continue. One, there are two types of Monstera Deliciosa. There might be three, and I know what you're going to say in the comments. A lot of you are going to go, no, there isn't, no, there isn't, no, there isn't. There will be at some point, okay? It's a thing. I, I'm not having anybody tell me that there is not a difference between these types. There is. And if you've owned Monstera, you'll know what I mean. But for the purpose of today's video, there are two types of variegated Monstera. There is small form and there is large form. Small form grows on a vine. The leaves basically don't even get half as big. I wouldn't say it was considered a dwarf form, but I guess it sort of is. Large form, literally trees, leaves three foot across. Like there is a humongous, humongous difference. And I'm pretty sure I've got some great footage of me featuring a large form monster. You'll see what I mean. These, these plants don't play around. No one can tell me there isn't a difference from that to that. Do you know what I mean? One is a tree. One is a tree. Okay. It's a tree. The second thing I want you to know, basically I want you to know about nodes and the space between them. So a node on a plant, if just in super simple terms, is essentially where a leaf comes from. So a leaf joining to a petiole, so that stem that joins the main vine, we'll call it, that comes from something called a node, which essentially it's sort of like a little bud on the, the main vine. That's what a node is. And the space in between those nodes is the internodal spacing. Right, Monstera albo is a naturally occurring mutation. It has nothing to do with being man-made, if you feel me. So every albo that you see is a result of propagation via a cutting. It is taken from an original mother with this genetic mutation, if you will. Conversely, the Monstera Thai constellation, it is called Thai constellation, abbreviated to TC, which is kind of real funny because it is a product of tissue culture. This Monstera is born from a lab. I imagine it was a mutation from something else they were doing in producing regular Monstera and have used the mother and they've started to just create more and more and more and more. So that is why we call it Thai constellation. I think it's really funny that it is also abbreviated to TC. I don't know why, I just do. But that is the difference between both of them. You might think it doesn't matter, but it does. It has an effect on the price, the availability on the market, all sorts of stuff. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. Squarespace have so many templates. They're not dated looking, they're not all the same with just the fonts and colors switched out. Out, they're really unique. You're bound to find a layout that really appeals to you as a starting point. Then of course you can customize and go from there. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me guys. Back to the video. Right, differences between the two plants. If you want to know and you're not sure which one you want or you just want to know the difference. So the first thing I want to talk about is the color of the variegation. So Monstera Albo is Albo. It is white, it is lily white, it is paper white. There is nothing in it. There's no warmth at all. The Monstera Thai Constellation, however, I wouldn't call it white. I wouldn't call it white, I would call it an off-white or dare I say a cream color. It's not quite the same. So if that's something that bothers you, if you want something that is super lily lily white, that's probably what you've got to go for. I would automatically say the Albo is maybe more for you. This next one might matter to a few people though, and that is the stability of that variegation. So in other words, how likely it is that that variegation could run out, disappear, revert, however you want to describe it in your own terms. So the Monstera Albo, it 
can kind of disappear on you. It can revert. So what that means is if you want to keep your plant looking great, depending on your starting point, so how much variegation your plant has, you might have to start chopping it, cutting it, pruning it back in order to keep that variegation because there is a possibility of essentially the plant growing all green leaves. And I'm presuming you don't want that, hence you are spending the money on a variegated Monstera and not a green normal Monstera. The Thai Constellation, however, it's essentially systemic. So every leaf that comes out is going to have that white aerosol, literally constellation pattern on it. Now you can get some chunks of sectoral variegation, by the way. It's just, I wouldn't rely on it. When you look at Thai, I, I wouldn't really call it big sectoral chunks a lot of the time. A lot of the time you get like a stripe going through as well. It's a very, very beautiful plant, but it, it does display very differently from the Monstera Albor. However, it's always going to do that. You're not going to get an all green leaf come out of your tie. You've, you basically don't have to cut it. You can grow it really big and really nice. Which brings me on to the size difference. So Monstera Albo, I've said it before, it is a small form Monstera, so it's going to stay a little bit dwarfed. It's not going to quite grow as big as the tie. The tie is the same as the big tree I showed you earlier. That's what's underneath. It's a big boy, you feel me? It, it don't mess around. That might matter to you if you only have a certain type of space. So the next thing I want to talk about is the density of the plant. Hopefully that makes sense. But the Monstera Albo, the space between those nodes that I talked about earlier on is quite large, which tends to mean the plant looks a little bit sparse if you only have one vine. You can grow one vine up a pole or whatever, that's fine, but it's going to look maybe not the best it could. The best thing you can probably do is have maybe three around the base of the plant and grow it up, and then you probably get something nice and bushy like you tend to see on the internet a lot of the time. And it is, honestly, it is due to the space between these nodes that kind of does that. However, the Monstera Thai constellation, the space between those nodes, so the space between where each leaf comes out, is so much shorter. It's maybe a third of the length, maybe sometimes even a quarter. Really depends on your environment, of course. It means the plant looks a lot more dense and you can, you wouldn't, you would never have more than one in a pot, if you know what I'm saying. If you're going to try and grow it up a pole, which is difficult, you only really want one tie in the pot. Just trust me on that, you don't want to mess with it. But a Monstera Albo, you can have many around the base of a pole and I actually recommend it because it's probably going to look a lot nicer. The general size of them is, as I said before, one grows huge like a tree and it's not really stoppable unless you keep cutting it which you probably don't want to do for a tie. Whereas the elbow, you could just grow it up a pole and just add to the pole and it will just stay really nice and beautiful. You don't really have to worry about it. So that might be a little bit of a consideration for you on the size and type of space. And I don't mean light there, I mean literal dimensions of your space. One good thing though about the space between these nodes on the plant is if you care, if that's your plan with your plant, the Monstera elbow is much easier to propagate. Honestly, you can get a pair of scissors in the gaps and cut the plant properly. On a Monstera Thai constellation, it's quite difficult to cut. You wouldn't really be able to get a pair of scissors in there. You're probably going to need a scalpel or something else, and you're gonna have to be quite careful doing it. The Monstera Albo, literally, just use a pair of scissors. You will probably have to cut off some of the vine on either side of the node, just to get it in a pot. There is a lot of spare there. So in terms of propagation, it is much, much easier to propagate an Albo. And to be honest, you don't really tend to get cuttings of Thai. You tend to get them in full plants, which I will go into a little bit later on. So in terms of selling privately, if you just want it as like a side gig, the Albo is much better for that. Right, general hardiness. So the Monstera Albo is pretty decent, I won't lie. Now I have one in the background, it's literally right up here. It is looking horrific, trust me, it looks horrific. It's been neglected a lot, but hey, it's fine, it's alive. It should be dead, trust me, it should be dead. But it's not, it's fine. It needs restarted, to be honest. It needs cut down and, and grown back up again. I don't know if you can tell, it's got a lean on, it, it's not good. But it's reasonably hardy, to be honest, it stood the test of time. Now, the Monstera Thai Constellation is a bit different. It used to be tough as nails. It used to be slightly frost resistant. It used to be a lot of things. It's kind of not anymore. And that is honestly due to the mother plant used for tissue culture. So clearly, the first time they made Thai, the original mother plant must have been strong as an ox. That's all I can tell you. The new plant plants, not so much. So I do refer to them as Thai 1.0 and Thai 2.0. I do have a couple of Thai 1.0s here. I'm very lucky. I've taken them for granted. I really have. But they're still alive despite not being watered for two years. 
So they really are showing their true colors. Tie 2.0, the next, whenever they've decided to change the mother plants used, Tie 2.0 is so much weaker. I could go into all day why it's probably weaker. It's so much weaker. It doesn't like being propagated as much at all. It looks slightly different, to be honest. It's a little bit leggier. The, the ratio of the leaf to the petioles, so the stems that come off our vine, it's not as nice. It's not as nice as what it was. So they are a little bit different. They were really hardy. And if you've got one of the original ties that you've had for years, you probably know that it's hard as nails. But if you've got a newer one, heck, even just propagating it, it's not the best time, I'm not gonna lie. I know I've had huge losses here from propagating it. So which one is the easiest to find? Well, that's, it's difficult really because Monstera Albo, if you want a cutting, you can find a cutting. And don't get me wrong, I know in different places of the world, the answer to this is slightly different, okay? Same as price, obviously. That is just a caveat of everything. But generally speaking, if you want an Albo, you can probably find them reasonably easy on the internet and you can find a cutting. I would say that was your easiest way of finding them, but you can find them. If you're looking for a Monstera a Thai constellation, the cheapest way you're going to get one is to buy a really small tissue culture plant. You could probably get them from a plug size, so like literally like six inches tall. You've got a lot more flexibility there when you're looking for a plant as to which size you want. A Monstera Albo, it's going to be a cutting, essentially is what you're going to get, and that, is, that has an associated size. Now, I don't like to talk about prices because they change all the time, and I'm in the UK, I have certain prices, but the rest of the world might be completely different. Like, for example, years ago. I don't know if it still is. Monstera Albo was quite cheap over here in the UK. Same thing as Europe, but in the US, it was insanity. Let me know, US, if you're all right, if you've been getting your Albo all right. But for us here, somewhere in the region between 25, maybe to 50 pounds, you will get probably maybe a two-leaf cutting for that, a one to two-leaf cutting of decent variegation. If it's a Thai constellation, you could probably get a small plant, maybe 10 to 12 inches tall, something like that, for about... 65, 75 pounds, somewhere along that region. Everyone is different, every shop is different, but generally, I'm pretty sure that's the average at the minute. Hopefully, I haven't bombarded you there. If I have, I'm gonna give you a few tips to help you decide which you probably prefer, because I know that just listing the differences, it, it doesn't necessarily help, right? So, a few tips if you don't know which plant you would prefer. The first thing to consider is, do you care if it's white or not? Because of course the Albor is white and the Monstera Thai constellation is, we're gonna call it cream. So if it's really, really, really important to you that you have really white variegation, I would say it's the Albor for you. Do you want to propagate bits of it and either create new plants with it to sell or for another purpose? If so, I would still pick the Monstera Albor because it's easier to propagate due to the space in between those nodes and everything else really. So if that's something you're looking to do, I would still suggest the Albor. Do you want to have a plant that you don't have to cut at all? Conversely, do you want something that you just leave it and it looks great? You're not into all that at all. You just want a nice big plant and you've got the space. If you do, the Monstera Thai Constellation is probably better for you because you don't have to cut it. The variegation is not going to disappear on you overnight. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about buying something variegated and losing that money that you've invested. I would pick the Thai for that. Next thing to consider, the shape of your plant. Essentially, I know that sounds really weird. Do you want a tall, thin looking bush or do you want a tree? Because some of us, we live for the trees. I know I do. And I would endeavor to have a tree whenever I could. If you don't have a ton of space and you don't want something that gets out of control, I don't think the tie is for you. I think the elbow would be a better choice. If you have a huge greenhouse though and you just need something to absolutely take over, then the tie is probably a great choice. So that was the background to the two different plans, the differences between them, and a couple of little tips there on how to basically choose the plan for you. But what do I think of them in 2023? So in 2023, obviously it really depends on the country you're in, but at least for us here in the UK and Europe, Monstera, both of them actually, Monstera Thai Constellation and Monstera Albo are sold in a lot of garden centers, a lot of plant shops. Believe it or not, they are. They're sold in boutique plant shops that offer something a little bit less ordinary, less normal, I should say. I don't know what the word is, but you get what I mean. And a lot of them are in bigger garden centers as well. They do have a price tag on them though. They haven't come down really, really cheap. The garden centers definitely like to get their money for them. A lot of the times you can actually get something cheaper going to a private seller than you can in a garden center, which is a little bit of a weird concept because we're used to it being the other way around sometimes. 
So, variegated monstera albor. The way these plants work is that they are produced via cuttings, essentially via propagating. Now, last time I checked, there was an absolute motherlode of them in Europe. I won't say where, but there is a motherlode, and I mean a motherlode of them. The ones that make it into garden centers from these big propagators, these big producers of these plants in Europe are usually plants with lower variegation. You would think if there are variegated monstera everywhere, huge supply, why are there low variegates? Well, 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 well. You can get lucky, but generally speaking, lower variegates are passed on to other garden centers. And I would argue this is a little bit of a cost of farm situation here because these plants, in, at least in the case local to me anyway, these plants are produced in Europe. And what the supplier does not want to happen is for other big brands to buy up a certain batch of plants and propagate them and make their own supply and basically sort of compete with them or just get on their own two feet in terms of production with this plant. This is why lower variegates are passed down and the high variegates are kept for production. Fun fact, in these warehouses, the plants are actually separated according to low, medium and high variegation, literally. And certain shops get the low, certain shops get the medium, and it's normally a, a click-based thing. This behavior from the growers though can actually tell us something. What it means is if we start to see higher and higher variegates being passed into garden centers, then we know that the plant is becoming more abundant because they've started to let the higher variegates go. So you can genuinely judge what's going on behind the scenes of this plant with what the variegated monstera looks like in said garden centers. Weird little pro tip, but you can work out what's going on with the plant. If you mainly say low variegates just aren't that great, it's still very much alive, it's still very much being controlled, there's still a lot of money to be made there. The second you see really high variegates in stores that don't have an insane price tag that is, then you know that the price of this plant is going to come down and the market is not crashing, but it's coming down a lot for this plant. So there's a little pro tip for you. And of course it does apply to other things as well. Thai constellation, the first wave of Thai, literally I've got a couple, I have maybe two or three. The first wave of Thai constellation were tough as nails and I mean they were tough as nails. If you've got a pre-2018 Thai constellation, then you know, you know what I'm talking about. And you might have had arguments with your friends because they've come along and bought a Thai maybe three years later and their Thai is just shit. It just, it doesn't stack up, it doesn't stack up. It doesn't look as nice, it's a little bit leggier, doesn't propagate, oh my God it will fall over if it's propagated, it will not go well for itself, it'll probably rot, among a few other things. Now, again, I like to call this Thai 1.0 and Thai 2.0, and it's something to be aware of because the stuff being circulated right now is Thai 2.0. So generally speaking, it's just, ah, it's not as good as what it was. It's not as good as what it was. And I would love at this point to formally ask Thailand if you could please pick a different mother plant and please just go back to one of those original mothers because from all of us to all of you, they were better. And and I'm sure you realize the same, unless you've lost your mothers. To be honest, it's highly likely that they have lost the strong mothers. Otherwise, why would they knowingly produce something weaker? It doesn't make a ton of sense because they will be producing it literally, guys, by the hundreds of thousands. It's in their best interest to have a nice one. I mean, I have a nice one here if you'd like to get in touch, but I do, I have a few of the originals. This is just something to be aware of in common times as of recording this video. There are more than one version of the tie out and you really want a 1.0. And what I do not want to happen from this video guys is for people to start selling Thai 1.0. If I see that I'm going to be really 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 angry because I don't want silly names to start coming out of this video. This is just something I'm calling them. So there is a pre-2018 Thai and there is like a post annual 2020 Thai and those are they're not so good. Maybe I've had bad luck. I don't know. I've had several batches in here and I'm still struggling with them guys like three years later. So if you've ever owned a Thai 1.0 and a 2.0 and you've seen the difference, please, please, please leave a comment below because this cannot just be me. It cannot just be me. People have to notice this. So what do I think? In terms of selling, so if you are an online shop, the best thing you're probably going to sell the most efficiently is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Essentially, you can buy it in at quite a lot of different sizes and this really helps when it comes to postage because when you post a Monstera Thai Constellation, out. Whether it's in a pot or not, that's not necessarily the problem. It's more the fact that you can get it from a baby plant. Honestly, ironically, they're not really that brittle. 
they can they can get away with a lot of damage as well. Conversely, with a cutting from a Monstera Albo, it's going to be a cutting or maybe it's a small plant. That long vininess, that does get quite brittle and it's not going to ship as well. Not only that, but you are kind of limited to selling and propagating cuttings unless you've bought big nursery plants in. And even the small nursery plants are about two foot tall. That's going to be a bit of a nightmare to post. So personally, in my opinion of actually selling them, the Monstera Thai Constellation is a safer bet if you want to stock one in your shop. I would certainly pick that one anyway. You don't even have to worry about the variegation. All of those things we covered before still apply. The other thing that is more prominent in Monstera Albo, to be honest with you, is you're going to have some quality control problems. And unless you are selling the specific picture of this Albo is the specific one that you're getting, you're going to have some issues, I guarantee you, because people get very upset with Albo on the way that the plant looks versus what they've bought. And in, in some respects, I understand it's because there is potential to lose it, essentially. So I kind of understand it. I think some people take it a bit far sometimes, but with a Monstera Thai constellation, due to how they are, due to the fact they're systemic and you can't necessarily predict what's going to happen. They're not really a Monstera where you think of chunks of variegation necessarily. You're going to have less problems with stuff like that because people have a different expectation of what the plant is going to be. So be very careful if you're selling Albo. Make sure you just do it on a plant by plant basis. Take your photos and that's what people are getting. If you're not and you're doing garden center plants, you might have a couple of different opinions on whether something is being sold as you know it's sort of sold accurately or not depending on what it is there also is the case of you know if you are a shop that's been unfortunately dealt a very low variegated hand of elbow you might not shift it that well now you might not shift it that well because there's a lot of private sellers out there that have got older batches before the monster elbow became as tightly controlled as what it is there's a lot of private sellers with much more variegated batches of elbow and you will get something much nicer going private so if you're going going to buy Albo into your shop to get it out, make sure you can price it really well and it's high variegation. Otherwise, honestly, I would not even bother buying it in. I would not even bother buying it in. Make sure you get a good one or sell both. I mean, I'm not making the rules. In terms of what is more fashionable, that, that's a really difficult one because it's very subjective and it, it really depends on what you want and what you like. So in 2020, there was a really big surge of love for the large form Monstera. Variegated or not, it didn't matter. Literally everyone wanted a large form. I know I did. I went and bought two. Maybe I even bought three. I can't even remember. I might have bought three. I bought a few in 2020. I really enjoyed them. That has still sort of crept in. I don't know whether things are, you know, quite as much as what they were, but they're still more in fashion than what they were in the beginning when I made that original video. So Thai have definitely, definitely, definitely come a long way. Albo is still good, but I think a lot of people are a little bit upset by the whole, you know, there's actually way more of them. They're not rare. They're being gatekept a little bit at the top by the supplier. So that's had a bit of an effect. Thai Constellation, we've had the thing with Costa Farms where, you know, it was sort of people waited on it a lot and then all of a sudden the supply wasn't going to be there and then that inflated the price of Thai massively. I do think it's come down, but that's still in people's heads, if you know what I mean. So ultimately, at the moment, I'm, I'm probably going to call Thai a little bit more fashionable than the Albo. But again, that's just my opinion and that's just my perception. And I'm sure a lot of you have a much different perception than that. In terms of which one I think you should buy. It's the same as the original video, really. There's no right answer. There has been differences between the two in terms of their journey. There's differences between the two in terms of their appearance and how they work and how they function and everything else. But really, buy what you want. Buy what you want. Don't care what's fashionable. Don't care what other people have got. Just don't care about it. Buy whichever one you wish. If you still want to wait for prices to come down, because I, I get asked that a lot. Again, I feel like Thai would be the most likely to come down, even though they're the most popular. And that's just due to the fact that they can be produced very quickly. But of course, I think Thai suppliers are getting greedy in some aspects of tissue culture and stingy or gatekeepy in other aspects. So I don't really know how that one's going to go. It's kind of up to the Thai on how that goes. The elbow, again, it's kind of up to those big suppliers where they start to unleash the beast and they unleash the high variegates out. If you've seen high variegates coming out in garden centers, let me know because that's a really good indicator of what's actually going on. Otherwise, we're never going to know. 
And I don't think a supplier is going to let me into one of those greenhouses again anytime soon because I kind of went and told everyone about it. So. so thank you very much for watching this updated video. I hope it had something useful to you, whether you own a tie or an elbow or not, whether you care or anything else. I hope it was a nice little update and a nice little bringing back to the forefront situation for both plants. They are still both great plants. Again, there are other things fashionable now as well, which kind of goes into this. For one, the mint monstera is hugely fashionable, hugely fashionable. But I as I mentioned before, those plants are featured in the Monstera Deliciosa Types video. I have the video on tissue culture if you don't know anything about that. I have the dark side of variegated Monstera video, which is very cool as well. So I'll leave all of those in the description. If you like this video, please do give it a like. It really, really helps. It lets me know that you enjoy the content that I make. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you here. Please feel free to hit that button below. Turn on the bell notifications as well so you never miss an upload. That is it from today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.